So as you've probably gathered by now, this is the GMB Japanese Condiments episode, and yes. we're going to be discussing some of our favorite side dishes, condiments, toppings, and uh, no, we're not going to be talking too much about oh, that. Oh, damn. Ah. I was kind of you know, looking forward to that. All right, Breaker Breaker One Niner on the interwebs, get your ears on for the GMB Fitness Skills Show. Uh, my name is Andy. For the next 30 minutes, plus or minus, Dr. Ryan here and I, who's not an actual doctor, uh, we're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff related to fitness, movement, health, um, and just being a good damn person. Yes. How you doing, Ryan? I'm great, man. Like your awesome. shirt. What shirt? What shirt are we sporting today? Today, this is the. Um, this is the QP Mayo uh, logo tea. Uh, any of you have been to Japan, you know that mayonnaise is kind of a different situation there than it is in the rest of the Western world. Oh yeah, world. mayonnaise is good um, in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, I I am a I am a, a big fan of the the QP one half brand of mayo. Yeah. yeah, that's good stuff. It is. It is. Um, it is. Yeah, mayo. If you ever go to Japan. Check out the mayo. Very different from the Miracle Whip kind of thing going on in the yeah. United States. So yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. I, the greatest thing about Japan is like, you know, you know, America we have all these sauces and different things. In Japan, they're just like red sauce, ketchup, <laughs> white That's sauce, salad true. dressing, mayo. mayo. It's all the same. <laughs> mayo. And you ask for mustard, and they're like, "Excuse me, mustard? what? Never heard of that. That what? Yeah. Love so." It. Yeah, so as you've probably gathered by now, this is the GMB Japanese Condiments episode, and yes. we're going to be discussing some of our favorite side dishes, condiments, toppings, and uh, no, we're not going to be talking too much about oh, that. Oh, damn. Ah. I was kind of you know, looking forward to that. Uh, we are going to be talking about some uh, fun stuff today. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, climbing. Uh, we're going to be talking about climbing, we're talking about seminars, and let's start it off talking about, about our t-shirt, the Skip the Kip t-shirt. What's up with that, Andy? Man, so we made this shirt starting off as a joke. We weren't even planning to sell it. And then everybody said that they wanted five of them. Uh, so we got more. We you know, put them up for sale. They sold out. Then we started getting hate mail from people that were like, you should have ordered more. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, you should make your own damn shirt. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Seriously. So we have ordered more, but you know we're a small company. We we don't we can't stock like a thousand shirts. Sorry guys, um, but wait another couple of weeks and we'll get them back in. Uh, however, however, the overwhelming support and and love of the skip the tip the skip the kip uh, t-shirt, uh, <laughs> the just the tip t-shirt has encouraged some people to then <laughs> send us all oh, these boy. messages. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, that was so funny. Uh, keep going. I'm not going to say anything. That's good. That's good. Um, to send us all these messages also asking, you know, why we hate CrossFit. Oh. oh. Because, one, CrossFit invented the word kip. Yeah. And, two, saying that we don't like kipping means that's that we right. hate CrossFit. And obviously, these people passed their uh, Logic 101 courses. Yeah. And, yeah. So, uh, yeah, th yeah. Is, number yeah. one, I can tell you we do not hate CrossFit. I actually think CrossFit is pretty damn good, and I know a lot of people who do it and love it and are super strong. So there's that. Other thing is, um, yeah, we still don't recommend kipping. I don't care. <laughs> you can give us 81 reasons you love kipping. We still don't recommend it, you know? And, and by the way, we're talking, we're talking kipping muscle-ups or kipping pull-ups. Now, there is the kip. Yeah. This is what's interesting. The kip to me. Uh, the gymnastic kip is actually what's called the glide kip. Um, well, for the women's uh, uneven parallel bars, things like that, use a kip. And a kip is just simply a way to get up above the bar. Um, so, yeah, the kipping. And it's useful in some muscle. things. Sure. It's useful sure. for you know parkour or whatever. It's yeah. a technique, though. It's not an exercise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Skip the kip. Um, yeah, yeah, and you know. Again, we're we're a small company, and our main our main thing is, is not selling T-shirts. Uh, stock uh, that we've you know we don't want to fill up Amber's 
I thought it would be kind of funny though to like completely fill up her apartment with yellow Skip the Kip t-shirts. Um, she's the one who's milling all these out. Uh, she's doing a great job of doing that. Once we have those in stock, uh, we'll let you know. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Until then, you know, relax, you know? Yeah. Everything's going to be all right. It's all good. It's all good. If you really need a yellow shirt, uh, go get some Fruit of the Loom, man. It'll, it'll totally be all right. All right, so let's also talk about seminars. We've had a lot of questions about seminars, and we've actually, pretty soon, we're going to have a lot of news about seminars. Uh, we're going to have seminars for sure this year in Australia, in California, um, in... England. Are we ready to talk about the other country? Uh, sure. Let's hit yeah, it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have Ryan's first trip to England. Fish and chips, baby. Every day. Yep. That's all I'm going to eat. Yep. Uh, yeah, I will be in Cambridge. Uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot. And uh, maybe a couple of nearby countries. We'll see. Right. We're not. See we're not for goes. sure about that yet. That goes. Yeah. But, um, uh, if you are interested, though, in hosting us, um, get a hold of us, and we can talk about yeah. what needs to happen in order to make that happen. Yeah. Every time we mention seminars, we get uh, messages that say, "Oh, why don't you guys come to, you know, Denver, yeah. Western Tennessee?" Or why don't you guys come to, you know, or why don't you guys come to Germany or something? You know, we'd love to. Yeah. We'd so love to. But uh, we can't just, like, pop up and in your town and call you up and say, hey, this is, uh, this is GMB. We're here, so come on over and let's train. It doesn't work that way, right? We've got to have a place to do it that has our equipment needs and everything. We've got to have uh, somebody helping promote us locally so that we can get enough people there to cover the cost of sending Ryan from Japan, of uh, you know, getting him away from his family for three or four days. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, that takes a lot of planning and work. Yeah. So if you want to know why we don't come to wherever you are, it's because you have not yet set it up. You've not set it up. If you want us to come to where you are, you need to help us. Help us find somebody who can host us. Help us find a facility. Help us make sure that it's all getting taken care of. All right? Uh, we, we would love to be able to take care of all of that, but none of us are in publicity and PR or event specialists. We're, we're kind of fitness trainer guys. Yeah, that's, kind of. Yeah. That's what we do. So, so the logistics, we need some help with sometime, all right? But we'd love to come see you. So get in touch. Send us an email, info at goldmetalbodies.com, uh, goldmetalbodies.com slash seminars. If you just want to know when the seminars are happening, sign up there, and we'll let you know. Um, and keep an eye on our Facebook. Uh, we definitely have a couple of surprises coming up probably before too long in the seminar uh, sort of arena that we can't talk about yet because uh, – yeah. yeah, we don't want to say anything and, and it not happen. So I want yeah. to make sure that it's all set, good to go before we make yeah. the official announcement. Let's, Let's talk, talk about climbing. Yeah, yeah. climbing. Um, recently, climbing. we posted a couple of things on our website. We posted a kind of tutorial on some climbing techniques on exercises for climbing for people to try. And also, we posted a uh, case study with one of our members, Sammy, who is also a climber, and he kind of inspired a lot of the stuff uh, when he started uh, training with us back a couple years ago and got to talking with Ryan, and I realized that they both had this love of rock climbing. And uh, so, yeah, I really, my, my experience with climbing is, um, yeah, none. <laughs> I was going to try to come up with something clever, like uh, climbing the oh, stairs or something that's like that. so awesome. Like, yeah. I, I've gone bouldering once, cool, uh, cool, and yeah. it was really challenging and cool and fun. Yeah. You know, I used to climb trees uh, when I was a kid, but that's about it. But luckily, Ryan actually knows what he's talking about. When we yeah, climb. I've actually I spent a lot of time climbing growing up. Um, I was just, my, my dad was really, really... Um, interested in and involved with climbing um, Boy Scouts, I was Boy Scout, Eagle Scout. And so we would spend a lot of time, uh, especially in Colorado, we go to Colorado quite a bit and do a lot of lead climbing. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, um, basically using the rope and instead of having the rope go from the top down in which you climb and someone belays you and 
they're not pulling you up, but the rope is in front of you. You actually climb, pull the rope up, lock it in into, into place where it depends on what you're doing. There's different kinds of climbing. I'm not going to go into the traditional climbing, bolt climbing, everything like that. But basically, you're pulling the rope up. And so um, uh, a lot of experience with that. Uh, also, bouldering. Uh, bouldering is great. Um, for me, it was good when I first came to Japan um, because I didn't need any equipment. Mm. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, here at the gym, we've got just a really basic rock climbing wall that we use with the kids. They like that. But my kids really enjoy rock climbing. I took Sienna um, a couple months ago, I believe. I don't even remember. But anyway, and she did her first um, top rope climb on nice. the real rock and it was awesome and she had a good time so uh since then we've been oh, i remember going, seeing the pictures of yeah, that now. yeah we posted yeah. a couple yeah. pictures of that and so interesting thing you know it's you've got the rock climbing stuff okay and i say stuff because there's so much there's many different ways of climbing that way it's several got, sports you know, yeah it's, it's not just, just it's even not one just thing one, several exactly. different sports you know yeah. and then you can even you know look at ice climbing and whatever but um you've got rope climbing you've got tree climbing you've got pineapple tree climbing i mean you know all this different kind of stuff and the thing is there isn't just one way to do it and yeah. so uh this this article that we did was just taking a look at some of the rope climbing things uh, that you can do, some examples. And, and I want to be clear, by the way, I am not, um, what is the proper way? Um, I can't, I th it's like silks when people use the silk. Um, oh, the aerial, the aerial you're not an aerialist? Stuff like that, yeah. I'm not, I'm not into that. Well, it's not that I'm into it. It's just I don't do it. I've never done it before. Mm. You know, and some people are like, dude, the technique for rope climbing, it's not good. As a matter of fact, Yuri, a friend of mine, he gave some good advice uh, to me. After that video came out, he was like, hey, man, you know, next time you want to do it, you might want to try to do it this way and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not a pro when it comes to rope climbing or anything like that. And even rock climbing, I'm not professional. But I do know a few techniques when it comes to rock climbing, things like that. So when you see me on the wall, I was just trying to show a couple variations of that, you know. There's a lot of different ways you can climb the rope. There's tons of different ways you can climb trees and things like that. I think that it comes down to looking at having fun with it, uh, challenging yourself, and yeah. exploring. Trying to find something that's new and a way that you can move your body in a way that you previously hadn't done that before. And I think this is a good way of looking at <laughs> that, the examples that I demonstrated in that video. Yeah, and I just want to say, you know, before you get into the details on that, like that's really that's why we make videos, though. Yes, yes. We, you know, there's a lot of people that that do different things for have different ways of uh, expressing what they do and teaching. For us, though, we're not making a bunch of things to show off. We're not making highlight reels. Uh, no. You know, it's not. So when Ryan makes a video that's about you know uh, climbing a rope, it's not hey look at me climbing a rope. We're trying to show the very basic things, and we're not saying this is the one best way, the ultimate way. This is how everyone should do it. We're just saying hey, this is one way that you can start now trying to do this thing. Exactly, and it's fun. You know, we're trying to get people into starting things. We're trying to show people how you know it's accessible to learn different kinds of movements. It doesn't really help anyone for us to put together a video that's like. Here's the most advanced thing I can do. Now and, look yeah, at it. And, yeah. Look at it and, yeah. and be impressed. Yeah. How does that help anyone? What you're seeing um, generally, pretty much, all the time is when I'm posting a video, you know, whether it be on Instagram or a tutorial that we do. Mm -hmm. This is something that, of course, I've trained, and, and sure. you know, to be able to do that. But it wasn't that I was training you know for hours upon hours just for that particular tutorial this was yeah. like for example the rope climbing one i hadn't cl climbed the rope in quite a while i mean that was just me like here's where i currently am mm -hmm. here's some examples of climbing the rope so yeah. you know i i don't train uh the other day i posted a a video of me doing an aerial now mm -hmm. i gotta be honest i haven't done an aerial in a very long time 
And, and I didn't just post the very first one I did that day, of course. I did it a couple times to make sure I could still do it. <laughs> make and sure you didn't break your neck. Make sure I didn't break my <laughs> neck. Um, but, but this is the thing that you know. hopefully people understand about us here at GMB is that it's not a show-off sort of thing. It's not about me. He's saying, look at me, I can do all this cool stuff. No, it's about all of you out there, and I'm just trying to show all of you that, you know, you know, 41 years old, I'm just having fun doing this stuff. I want to do it to help all of you out there show ways that you can do it safely and get the skills that you want to get. So we're not looking at saying, okay, um, by, by following GMB, you're going to be able to become a circus performer tomorrow. Now, there are concepts and things that, that yeah. you can learn in GMB that will help you with that, but yeah. that's not really our goal. And I'll say that there, there are many, many people who are our members and our clients who purchase training from us uh, and, and do coaching from us. There are many people who are in that category who are better at some of these things than we are. Absolutely. Right? Some there are many people, people yes. who can climb a rope better than you can oh, yeah. oh, that yeah. are using our stuff. Oh yeah, uh, and so we're not saying we're never saying that this is us and this is the ultimate pinnacle of anything. And so I mean, and also if you happen to be one of those people that's better at climbing a rope, you know, Ryan is not going to be upset with some feedback no. either. No. And in fact, someone posted um, on I don't remember who it was. I, I, it might have been Verity. I can't I can't remember, but um, she shared the link to mm -hmm. uh, our article, and someone below it posted, you know technique is horrible blah 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 and and I replied to that and that doesn't hurt my feelings at all no. it doesn't really it doesn't because um, it, it's not an ego thing for me my reply I wasn't being a smart ass at all I was simply you know hey that's great thank you if you have any tips feel free to share a video with me and, and I'm being honest about that I'm not please share a stuff. video with seriously I mean I am I'm like I want to learn yeah. I really want to learn yeah. and so and you know you brought up a great point there's a lot of people out there who are a lot better at, than me at doing a lot of stuff and that's cool uh, I'm always open to suggestions because all I want to do is learn and become a better coach for the people um, that are involved with what we're doing so yeah. uh, that's it. Which yeah. is why we don't have rope climb one. That's right. Yeah, uh, you're not going to be seeing you know? anything like that. Which is another reason why I'm 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 not going to be doing um, rope any, seminars. Yeah, ropes, or I'm not going to be doing one arm, one arm handstands. Sim, you know, kind of stuff like yeah. that. You know, yeah. there's people out there that are just light years, light years beyond me. Good example. Just you know, I woke up this morning, and two people I really admire, Yuri and Miguel. Uh, UD is visiting Miguel right now in New That's Zealand. That's right. I saw that. Man, that yeah. video they posted, I just, oh, just so yeah. awesome. And the cool thing to me, to be honest about this, is yes, the techniques and everything and what they're doing is wow, it's cool. Yeah. But just the fact that they're working together and they put all you know their ego to the side and just said hey listen let's make a video and let's train together and have fun I think that's really cool yeah. um, you know kind of off topic but basically you know that's GMB right there in a nutshell we're not about saying oh, we're better than everyone else out there we're about learning and wanting to become better at what we do and working with cool people so just like me working with Mike Fitch doing that seminar you know we just we want to enjoy and share things with with our with our posse and you know our alpha posse, uh, you know, introduce other people and show people that there's great stuff out there. So uh, getting back to the climbing portion of yeah. it, um, you know, when climbing, there are some things that I, I suggest uh, you make sure that you um, consider when doing this, and that is, uh, if you are climbing a rope, if this is the first time that you're climbing a rope. Um, be safe. You know, you might be able to get up there, but, you know, depending on the height of the rope, uh, we don't want you falling down. Um, yeah. When I was in Sydney, actually, I had the opportunity to climb with, um, uh, I forgot what they call themselves, the, um, goodness gracious. Anyway, Marcus Bond, Marcus uh, Bondi is a guy, very, oh. very neat guy. Uh, he holds the Guinness uh, Book World Records for uh, rope climbing, his team for speed climbing. They have a rope hooked up um, on the rocks. There's a cliff. Yeah, down at the uh, there's beach. a cliff. Awesome. 
Yeah, and, and they, they let me climb it. And you know what? I mean, I, I climbed fairly well, and uh, I had confidence climbing, but that really freaked me out. Um, you know, and the reason why is because if I were to fall, I they'd be scraping me up with a spatula you right. know, uh, when I was done. So when you are climbing, uh, take that into consideration. Uh, it might be fun to try and climb all the way up to the top of the rope, but in the beginning, I suggest you know only going about halfway. Go yeah. where you feel safe, uh, working using a technique that. Just remember, however high you climb up, you have to climb you back have to down. Climb back down, exactly. It's the fast way down, and you don't want to take it. Nope. And, you know, the kids, uh, this is a, climbing rope is a big part of what we do over here in Japan with the kids. And, and the kids, you know, the first time they climb and they actually get up there, I, I help them. They want to slide down the rope. Yeah. Now, you don't want to do that. Okay? You, you don't. really don't want to do that. So we teach the proper position for the hands and things like that. So little things like that, uh, please take into consideration and understand that it's not just a series of just doing pull-ups. Um, it's quite different. But rope climbing will get you very, very strong. Uh, something else, though, to make sure to do is, uh, you know, proper warm-up, but take care of your elbows. Yeah. Um, overworking the rope. Uh, really anything, you know, you could be working on the front lever and using ice cream makers, um, ice cream makers to uh, get your front front lever better. It can really play havoc on your elbows, uh, tendonitis, um, things like that, and especially the rope. So uh, take care that you're uh, really <laughs> listening to your body and making sure that you don't overdo it in that case. I know a lot of people, a lot of people working on uh, one-arm chin-ups, uh, that end up getting elbow issues because they're overworking their arms. So anything it seems like almost everyone who works pretty on one much, yeah, it's, ends yeah. up with tendonitis at some yeah. point. I, I've never heard of anyone who's gotten it without having a problem. You know, it's one of those things, and, and because it just takes so much work to do it. Um, yeah. You know, I hate. You know, I don't want to say, well, it's just something that's going to happen. I mean, you know, if you're smart about it, hopefully it won't happen. But just, just understand that there's a good possibility that it will. And so just like with rope, you know, if you're doing all of these pulling exercises, um, like I heard a guy, he was like, yeah, I do a lot of rope stuff. And um, he said, you know, my elbows hurt. We we're talking about it. And he says, I don't know why. And I said, well, how much rope work are you doing? And he said, I was like, well, you know, that doesn't seem to be too much. And then he said, you know, but I'm also doing one arm chins on the rings and I'm also doing this, I'm doing this. So you also have to think about the other stuff that you're using uh, in your program and take that into consideration. So. Yeah. And, and you know, with that said also, that's kind of why we make programs too. You know, people ask, well, why don't you just make a tutorial on this move or this move or this move? And the biggest thing is that the training for some of these more advanced things needs to live within a program. Yes. Because you yes. can't just add on like one arm chin training onto other stuff without taking into consideration the, the net effect of the training. It's not just a single thing, right? And so that's why we make these programs the way we do because it's kind of, it's the full training ecosystem, right? right. So, you know, and, and we're not yeah. saying that you have to buy our stuff or you can never learn anything, <laughs> but you have to approach that with the same attitude that everything you train, everything you do goes into it, especially when you're getting into more advanced, more difficult, uh, more stressful, exercises and movements. Yeah. You always have to approach it from that holistic viewpoint. Otherwise, you're probably going to be an injury. And this is something we recently talked about in the GMB trainer course. Um, we've got quite a few people, uh, new additions, say additions, additions, uh, trainer, <laughs> additions uh, trainer candidates, and um, who are training other things, mm -hmm. and but also need to, of course, work on the trainer course material and so we want to make sure especially you know with the GMB trainers because there is so much work involved that they're not burning out um, mm -hmm. yeah another example is we have the the muscle up course right now that we're working on and it's a lot of work because our focus yeah. is mainly on the muscle up and so uh, little things little mm -hmm. things that can have big effects that you don't want for example ripping on your wrist um, you know and overtraining the elbows like I was mentioning because we're you know working on that false grip and things like that so always having to take into consideration what else you're doing uh, to yeah. make sure that you can actually fulfill that uh, time uh, frame to be able to get the muscle up or whatever else you're working on so uh, it's about 
I, you know, I want to say health, but I, I don't want people to think that we're talking about like healthy. I'm just talking about, you know, joint integrity, being able to actually uh, keep doing what you want to do without getting injured so that you can, you know, not have to take a break for six months because you have tendonitis in the elbows because that sucks. So, yes. Anyway, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, back to the climbing thing. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Exploration. That's a big one. Um, learn how to do it safely and then play. If you've never yeah. bouldered before, there's so many, <coughs> you know, bouldering gyms that they have nowadays. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, it's surprising sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you might not know that there's one there. It's usually tucked in some like industrial park somewhere yeah, where yeah, the rent is yeah. cheap and they have big uh-huh. open spaces. So you're not going to like be driving by the strip mall and happen to see bouldering gym. You're not going to be downtown like going to a, you know, a restaurant or something and see a bouldering gym next door. So you have to look for it, you know, Google it, search it out. But if you live in a pretty largish area, you, there's probably something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I'd say go check it out. I went with a friend and I was like, I don't know, I'm not really too much into this. And I th- you know, we went and I started and like four hours later they were closing it. You know, I'm like, man, what? Come on, turn the lights yeah. back on. Yeah, you know? it's fun and it can be really And then the next day I was yeah. so sore. Yeah. So, so sore. <laughs> but your forearms looked like Popeye, right? Yeah. Oh, so. man. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so, we talked quite a bit about quite a bit about climbing and everything today. Uh, anything else? add to that or well I just want to say we we have a lot of people I think that are you know into different sports uh, for example we did the case study with Sammy and he's a climber and he's used GMB stuff we don't have any climbing programs but he's used rings one rings two he used uh, the flexibility program and our, our movement course he's used all of those and he's he said that it, they've all really helped him out a lot in his sport and that's really kind of the the point is that we're not trying to convert you to the sport of GMB. You know, it's not gymnastics, it's not CrossFit, it's not it's not a method of training that's trying to be a sport. This is a general fitness thing that you can you can use for better performance in whatever your sport is. You know, and, and like we sometimes say, even if your sport is just, you know, taking care of your kids or if you're not old enough to have kids, you know, whatever it is you do. But yeah, Sammy uses our stuff for climbing. We have a bunch of people that use our stuff for climbing. Uh, and Really, it's just a matter of whatever the thing is that you're doing is find something that seems like it'll complement that, and uh, yeah, use use the stuff. And if you if you have an activity that you're not sure, uh, you know, send us a message. If your if your sport is like dressage or something, you might have to send us a video before we're able to give you a recommendation. Sorry, I don't know what what the physical demands of some sports are, but send us an email anyway. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, I think we also need to give a shout out to Brian. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if I can make this. Uh, let's see if the recording was. So Brian sent us a, a note. What? Hey guys, I love your show. Uh, we love you too. Me. Hope you guys stay the same. You guys are awesome. Um, just thank you guys. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks. Yeah. That's awesome. You're awesome thanks, too, man. Brian. That's great. I uh, really appreciate it. And yeah, we're we're going to stay the same. Uh, you don't get to be this much of a jackass and suddenly stop being a jackass ever. I'm sorry you're stuck with us, dude. <laughs> it's the way it is. It's the way it is. All our, right. our personality flaws are not going anywhere. Yeah, um, but if you've got a message you you'd like us to play, uh, if you've got a message you'd like us to play on one of the uh, – on one. One of our show episodes, or a question you'd like to ask, or anything, click the uh, the the button that's on the page where the video and everything is. Uh, yeah, it's there, and you can leave us a message, and we'll play it back, and uh, yeah, answer any questions, make fun of you, something like that. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening, and uh, until next time. Have fun. All right. Thanks. All right.